Um, hey, Al. I think I saw Karen. Hi, Lynn. I'll be right back. Okay. So it looks like we only have one application today, tonight. Yeah, one public hearing. So, so we shouldn't have to stay up real late, hopefully. <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> Hey, Lims. Hi, Dan. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm good, thanks. down Okay, it's seven o'clock and I'm calling the November 10th, 2020 regular planning and zoning commission meeting to order. And we'll do roll call first. Commissioner Christensen. Present. Commissioner Benavides. Present. Commissioner Park. Here. Commissioner Seavey. Present. Commissioner Gay. Here. Commissioner Berenson. Present. 
and Commissioner Eby, I'm here. So we have a full house and the quorum. Okay, so the next item in our um, agenda, and this is appearing before we approve the agenda, which is a little strange, but I think this is how we usually do it with resolutions, is uh, we have resolution 2020-5 for the rules of transaction of business. And uh, Director Justice, do you have any comments that you'd like to uh, share with us on the resolution? Uh, yes, uh, Chair, Commissioners. Uh, yes, this is early in the packet because it's a resolution. Um, the only change to this resolution from the resolution that we adopted in May for COVID um, is under <laughs> Roman numeral two, uh, mm -hmm. section I, voting. Uh, we added one section for um, allowing discussion prior to a motion uh, after the floor is closed for public comment. Uh, so that this way, um, if this resolution is adopted, uh, the commission can discuss uh, the merits of an application uh, before a motion is made, and then after the motion is made, discuss as well. I stand for any questions. Any questions by any of the commissioners? Is there any discussion by the commissioners? And this is something that we discussed at our last meeting. Um, and, but I'd like to see if there's any further discussion. Um, uh, uh, yeah, so I'm looking uh, on uh, <laughs> F duration of meetings. Uh, the first, the, the first article there about us not going beyond the the uh, time of 10 p.m. Oh. Uh, unless uh, I think it says un unless we agree that we could go beyond. Uh, let's see. Uh, unless we all, unless we all already agreed that we we could go beyond. Is that is that correct? But off, the, the, the thing is, oftentimes we don't decide to go beyond 10 p.m. unless we're like five minutes from 10 p.m. So is that an issue for us? Uh, Commissioner Benavides, commissioners, uh, no. So that um, we, we unfortunately don't know how long a meeting is going to be until we get until uh, it happens. So um, whether it is uh, a few minutes before 10 or a few minutes after 10 after a public hearing item has wrapped up. Um, the, the point of this uh, uh, for duration of meetings is to have uh, an opportunity to reconvene the next day. Um, it typically does happen around 10 p.m. If, if we need to make this motion. Okay, all right. There was not a time limit to make, to make that motion to go beyond 10 p.m. then. So you're, you you agree to that then? That it seemed it seemed like we had to do it well before 10 p.m. And I was just thinking we never do it well before. Uh, Commissioner Benavides, commissioners, that's correct. Um, you do not need to make the motion well in advance of 10 p.m. Um, this is mainly uh, to make sure that you know we can we can we have a standard time that we. Uh, can make a motion to reconvene. Okay. And uh, again, the only change to this resolution from the May resolution is uh, the voting and decision by the commission. Okay. Is there any, uh, any, the further, any further um, discussion, comments? Yeah, Chair Woman EB. Yes, Commissioner Gay. So I thought that we were going to get to review this, this change. Um, Commissioner Park was going to submit his, submit some, something that he did with the legislature, the way they ran their meetings. So I'm surprised to see it. <coughs> put in here, is that, did I just miss something? Or did it? 
No, and um, I, I, I was a little surprised to see it myself and I considered uh, pushing it back to a later point in the meeting <clears throat> under um, new business. Um, uh, so Commissioner Gay, uh, Chair Eby, Commissioners, mm -hmm. um, so from uh, last month's meeting, uh, from that discussion, um, it was decided that we would uh, put together a resolution mm -hmm. based on the language uh, that Commissioner Park uh, would provide from the legislature um, for a resolution to uh, possibly adopt and the discussion would uh, take place for mm -hmm. that adoption. Uh, however, I do believe that if we want to postpone this item, we can for later in the meeting, if that's correct, Attorney Winter. Are you asking uh, Winter? Oh, here you are. Um, Madam Chair, uh, Tiffany, you can move it anywhere in the agenda you want. Um, just need a motion to, to, to move the, the, the agenda item. Yeah, so right now we're just discussing it and I'm hearing uh, uh, Commissioner Gay might want to postpone it. I myself wouldn't mind postponing it until later in the meeting, but let's have further discussion before we get to a motion. Well, is Any? this the correct language? Did, did, um, did Ms. Commissioner Park um, present this language to Ms. Justice. Commissioner Park? No, but the language is fine. Um, also, I'm loath to point out that what we're doing now is precisely why we need to adopt the resolution. Because you're debating a resolution under our current rules, we're now debating a resolution without a pending motion. That's why we need to adopt this resolution. So. Okay, I'd like to comment on that comment, uh, Commissioner yes. Park, because we engage in three different types of decision making. One is administrative, one is legislative, and one is quasi-judicial. Quasi so what we're doing now is administrative. We're deciding on whether to adopt a, a new rule. And I think we've always uh, had discussion on this type of decision before a motion. Um, I don't see any problem with it. Similarly, um, with a legislative type decision, which is um, something that would affect the entire village, like a new ordinance, like the, the variants uh, were, uh, were uh, considering whether to suggest that the Board of Trustees amend the ordinance on variants. That's a legislative type decision. But we're talking about, um, well, what we talked about at the last meeting was a quasi-judicial decision. And that means we're making a decision that is based on one person or one group of people's application. And it's quasi-judicial -judi meaning trial-like. You know, we're conducting a trial. And I think the procedure is more important in that type of decision. And so, um, I, I really don't think uh, personally that we should change the rule for all three types of decisions. I think we should have a different uh, procedure and a little more strict in our quasi-judicial public hearings like we have coming up on the variants. So, um, so Lynn, that's Madam really Chair, I agree. Um, and I think that you're exactly right. Unfortunately, if you read the rule and you take out the language that we have, it doesn't make a distinction between quasi-judicial, legislative, or administrative. It says making a decision. That's why we need the amendment. I'll stand there. I'll rest my case. Any other discussion? 
Well, I'll, yes, I'll, uh, I'll make a comment. Thank you. Um, I agree with Mr. Park that I think this change is important for us to be able to discuss the action before we make a motion. Um, I think that it will um, clear up some confusion that I've seen during these meetings um, in, in that type of decision making, but I think the resolution will allow us to be able to discuss whatever action we're, we're about to make a motion on before we make a motion. And then even afterwards, if, if necessary. So that would be my vote. Mm -hmm. Any other discussion, comments? Seeing none, uh, do we have a motion? I'll move to adopt the this particular new resolution. Is there a second? I'll second it. <clears throat> okay, the <clears throat> the um, motion to adopt this resolution has been made by Commissioner Berenson and seconded by Commissioner Park. Uh, we're going to do a roll call vote. All in favor, or those in favor will say aye and those opposed nay. Commissioner Christensen? Aye. Commissioner Benavides? Aye. Commissioner Park? Yes. Commissioner Seavey? Aye. Commissioner Gay? Nay. Commissioner Berenson? Aye. Commissioner E.B. is nay. So the motion carries five to two. All right, now we'll move on to approval of the agenda. Director Justice, are there any changes to the agenda? Uh, no, there are not. <clears throat> Okay, is there a motion to approve the agenda? Yes, I'll make a motion to approve the agenda. Okay, is there a second? I'll second. Was that Rachel? Okay. Okay, the um, motion uh, will be called on a roll call vote. Commissioner Christensen? Yes. Commissioner Benavides? Yes. Commissioner Park? Sorry, yes. Commissioner Seavey? Aye. Commissioner Berenson? Aye. Commissioner E.B. Aye. The motion carries unanimously. Okay. We come now to the public comment period of the agenda. Um, and Commissioner Eby, uh, sorry, uh, I, I don't believe uh, Commissioner Gay voted, or maybe I missed it. No, you didn't. I would vote aye. Thank you. I'm sorry. I checked you off. As... Apologize for that. Okay, now residents may address the Planning and Zoning Commission to comment on issues, problems, or successes on topics that do not appear elsewhere on the agenda. Audience members will be given an opportunity to comment on agenda items as they come up. So this is just for comments for items not on the agenda. Kiko, do we have any members of the public signed up to speak? If you were, nobody has signed up to speak. All right, is there anyone in attendance who wishes to speak during this public comment period? who did not sign up prior to the meeting, please use the raise hand tool to indicate this. There are no hands raised. All right. 
Now we'll move on to the consent agenda. And um, on the consent agenda, we have just the approval of the minutes of the October 13 regular meeting. Are there any corrections or comments from the commissioners about the minutes? Okay, I have um, one comment and that is on um, page six, the discussion about meeting procedures that we engaged in last month uh, is in the minutes, it's as part of the uh, director justice's report, but I think we actually uh, discussed it as new business. So it's, there's no substantive change, but I think that uh, maybe that change should be reflected just in the order in which it, they're listed. Are there any other um, comments about the minutes? All right, is there a motion to approve the consent agenda with the minutes? as amended. First, I think you have to move to amend it and then you have to move the adoption of the, the approval of the amended uh, minutes. Okay. I will move to amend the minutes as I uh, reflected earlier, just uh, to change the order of the discussion on the meeting procedures. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. Okay, now is there a motion to approve the consent agenda with the minutes as amended? Yes, I, I move to approve the, the consent agenda uh, as amended. Is there a second? I'll second. I'll... <laughs> Commissioner Seavey got there first. All right. Um, <clears throat> Commissioner Benavides moved to approve the minutes as amended and Commissioner Seavey seconded the motion. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Okay, the motion carries unanimously. Um, all right, we're gonna move on now to the public hearing section. And we have uh, one public hearing this evening and it's uh, V20-12, a request by John and Kathleen Avila for a variance from section 9.2.7 E1, the minimum lot area shall be one acre 43,560 square feet to allow for a lot of 0 0.4176 acres to build a sig single family home in the A1 zone in the North Rio Grande character area. The property is located at 85 blank Rio Grande Boulevard Northwest. The address has not been assigned yet and is legally known as tract 32C as shown on map number 25 of the Middle Rio Grande Conservancy District, projected section 17T11N R3E NMPM, Los Ranchos de Albuquerque, Bernalillo County, New Mexico. The property contains 0 0.4175 acres, more or less. Are there any commissioners who will recuse themselves from this item? Okay, seeing none. Attorney Winter, please swear in Director Tiffany Justice. Tiffany, I cannot see you, but if you would please raise your right hand. I it's raised. Uh, do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Director Justice, may we have your planning report? Uh, commissioners, uh, so first, just to clarify the address. Um, the applicant lists on their application that this is 8519 Rio Grande Boulevard. Um, so that address hasn't been assigned yet by Bernalillo County. 
uh, hence uh, the difference in the application and the location description. Um, the applicant desires to build a single family residence on this property. Um, and since there is not an existing single family residence on the property, um, and it is an MRGCD tract, uh, before it can be platted uh, in, a, in, the minor, in our minor subdivision process and have uh, building permits to build a residence, um, it must uh, first obtain uh, variance because of its lot size. Um, the surrounding properties are all zoned A1 in the North Rio Grande character area. Um, and in terms of the other subdivision requirements, there is an additional five feet of private access easement that is gonna be required for the subdivision um, since this easement provides access to more than one lot, but that is something that will be uh, addressed in the minor subdivision process. This is just something that I wanted to make sure the applicant was aware of. Um, in terms of the variance in accordance with section 9.2.257A1, the variance is not contrary to the public interest. We've received no comments in opposition to this uh, item prior to the publishing of the meeting packet. In accordance with section 9.2.257A2, the variance meets hardship criteria four, five, and six. Uh, the fourth criteria is that circumstances have created a condition under which no reasonable use can be made of the land without the requested variance. Um, the reasonable use that's hindered in this case is for a single family residence. This property is zoned A1, agriculture and residential. Uh, and so there is still use of the land in keeping with its zoning through agriculture. However, the residential aspect uh, could not occur without the variance as our MRGCD ordinance prohibits uh, <coughs> building dwellings where there is not an existing dwelling on the property on MRGCD tracks. Um, and our MRGCD ordinance is intended uh, to plat unplatted land um, and in doing so bring uh, that property closer to compliance with the code, uh, hence the need for a variance. Um, criteria number five, the development proposed in the variance differs from that allowed in this ordinance only enough to leave the alleged hardship. Uh, this property is an MRGCD tract and the proposed subdivision would maintain the same lot lines that currently exist on the MRGCD tract. Uh, this stretch of land is also comprised of multiple MRGCD tracts that are all roughly 0.4 acres. So the size of the property is not unusual given the surrounding area. Uh, criteria six, the alleged hardship is such that relief is justifiable in accordance with the goals and policies of the master plan. Um, this variance is supported by the master plan uh, in the sections of overall village goals, village form and residential development. <clears throat> and in accordance with section 9.2.257A3, the use of the premises is not changing. The property is zoned A1 and the proposed use of a single family residence is allowed in the A1 zone. Uh, so with that, the department recommends approval of the 20-12 uh, for variance from section 9.2.7E1. The minimum lot area shall be one acre, 43,560 square feet, um, to allow for a lot of 0 0.4175 acres to build a single family home in the A1 zone in the North Rio Grande character area with the following findings, uh, that it is and is not in conformance with the goals and policies of the master plan. It's not contrary to the public interest. The use of the premises is not changing and owing to special conditions, a literal enforcement of the section will result in unnecessary hardship, the criteria for which that are met with number four, five, and six. Um, and no application for a variance has been submitted for this property in the prior six months. Um, and so therefore the variance meets uh, the requirements of section 9.2.25 E7A, one, two, and three, B and C. Um, and public notice requirements have been met and I stand for any questions. Do any commissioners have questions for Director Justice? Uh, Chairwoman E.B., I have a question. Yes, Commissioner Gay. Um, in the application packet, it, we don't have a site plan, uh, elevation plan, uh, site, landscaping or it's marked off on the checklist, but I don't see it in the packet. Is that uh, minor oversight or did they not um, submit one? Uh, so Commissioner Gay, commissioners, that application checklist um, is used for a variety of variances uh, for, uh, so in a pre-consultation meeting, typically with an applicant, uh, we will, uh, go through and check um, what is needed for a variance. Uh, in this case, uh, my 
version of the packet is not showing check boxes next to those, um, but that is not required for this variance um, because the, the landscaping and elevations uh, do not exist at this point because this is a vacant property. But if it's uh, publicly noticed for neighbors to inspect, um, why would we not have at least the site plan in there okay. so the neighbors might have a ability to see what this these people are building? So uh, Commissioner Gay, commissioners, on page 29 of the packet, there is a subdivision plat that shows uh, the proposed lot lines for the property. Um, the so, house design and residential building permit are separate from the subdivision and um, the variance. So they, uh, the applicant at this point might not even have building plans. Uh, so they don't know what the site will look like. Um, and that is not a requirement for a minor subdivision. Um, yeah, I get that they don't have construction plans, but when you, when we gave the Avalas there another um, variance for the setbacks in March for lot, for the other lot east of this one, we had elevations and we had site plans. So I'm not sure what's exactly the difference. We're not approving a uh, subdivision, major subdivision <laughs> or proven a variance to build a home there. So I was surprised that they were not in there. Uh, so Commissioner Gay, commissioners, uh, so that variance uh, was, I guess, for a different uh, section of our code. So uh, this, um, so that variance was for uh, the setbacks on the property. Um, there is no setback variance applied in this case. So the setbacks still apply for this property uh, when they decide to design and build their structure. Um, and if they do need to infringe uh, on the setbacks, that would require another variance. This is uh, for the platting of the property. Uh, so all uh, they really need is the site plan or the subdivision plat itself uh, without any details of that. Uh, because that's, I guess, not part of the variance that they are requesting. They're only requesting a variance for the lot size. Uh, so all we need to know are the perimeter and area of the of the land. Okay, thanks. Any other questions for Director Justice? Um, I do have one for Director uh, yeah. Justice. Commissioner Seavey. Yeah, so this this five foot access easement, just to clarify, so we understand the lay of the land here, that's to connect to the cul-de-sac to the south. Uh, Commissioner Seavey, commissioners, no, that is going to be on the north side of the property, um, because uh, so this this property is along a stretch of road uh, that to the west there is a dead end, um, and because this property is kind of in the middle of that road, it leads to multiple properties. And we have an access requirement uh, for lead for access to two to eight properties. So because of that, they will need to have more access because they are accessing, or that road provides access for multiple properties. Thank you, Director Justice. And is that width also, um trying to help it conform with a uh, fire code to, to bring it up to proper width? Because I know we discussed this uh, alleyway, it's somewhat narrow, so. Yes, uh, Commissioner Seavey, uh, our requirement is for a 20 foot um, access easement to one property and 25 feet for two to eight properties. Uh, the idea there being uh, that we do need to provide uh, 20 feet of access for emergency vehicles, such as uh, fire trucks, um, and for properties that, for roads that lead to multiple properties, it's more likely that there's going to be parking along the side of the road, uh, like in a more traditional subdivision. So then that extra 
a uh, few feet still needs to provide access for uh, their emergency vehicle. Thank you. So uh, Tiffany, the, the, the five foot extra for the access easement, that's not a condition for if we decide to grant uh, the variance. That's just, you said, I think you said earlier, that's just for the information of the applicants so they, they know that that's what they need to do. Uh, Commissioner Eby, Commissioner Z, yes, that is correct. Uh, that's not a requirement of this or a condition of this, of this variance that is application of a separate uh, section of our ordinances. And it was just for the information of the applicant. Okay, thank you. Any other questions for Director Justice? Is the applicant present? Yes, stand by. Mr. Avila, can you un? Mute yourself yep. and or your. Yes. But we, yeah. I think, I think we are unmuted. Okay. And if you'd like to share your video, we, we would welcome to see your faces. Oh. But you don't have to do that. Okay. Uh, we're going to try. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Oops, it's a, so click on the plus. Um, can, we, can you see us? Let's see. Well, Not yet. we're a little technically challenged here. That's all right. That's all right. <laughs> we, can, we can proceed. Please uh, state your... Okay, wait just start a minute. Video, okay. okay, start video. Okay, video. now you can see us? Okay, all right. Okay. Okay. Yes, if we... okay. <laughs> this, is, this is a little weird. <laughs> Can I ask if you're both intending to speak? I, well, because we'll I have, have you both sworn in. So, yeah. so I do you want to speak, John? No, you can go ahead. I, I, I okay. Well, let me ask you to please yes. state your name and address for the record, then, Mrs. Okay. Kathleen Avila, 8529 Rio Grande Boulevard, Northwest. Okay, and our attorney will now swear you in. Okay. Um, both of you, could you please raise your right hand? Okay, got it. Yes. We're to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. We do. We do. Thank you so much. Okay, thank you. And and your husband, that's John Avila? Yes. Same address? Okay, so you can both feel free to speak. You're both thank under, you. under oath. Okay, go ahead and uh, give us your... Vision. <laughs> vision for the application. So, so we have uh, lived, we currently live on the same lane. Uh, we bought our property in, oh, 1992. And, and then we built the house we're living in, in 1999. Um, as uh, when we moved in or purchased this particular property, um, we had neighbors um, all along the lane on the south side. And over time, those neighbors got old and wanted to move elsewhere and our circumstances changed. And they, they came to us and to purchase their property. And we, which we did over time, over this last 21 years. Um, we're 81 and 76 years old. It is, we sold our business. It is our intention to leave our sons a, a residence in which they could live and um, into the future. So the property that we that we are asking to for this Very. the the variance to have it platted uh, will be used as a uh, to build a single family 
or a single uh, family mm-hmm. dwelling and uh, not overly large mm-hmm. and not overly um, elegant, <laughs> but uh, fitting, fitting to the community. Um, so that's why we're asking for this variance. We, we are very respective of our neighbors we all live along a, this little dirt lane that we enjoy, and um, we really respect the village and your intention to keep the rural and uh, aspect. the aspect of this area. So we feel like we're longtime residents. We um, we love being here. We want our sons to have um, a long time residence here. And um, would you add anything? <laughs> no, I'd just like to thank, uh, <laughs> thank everyone for the, for the opportunity to, uh, to ask for this variance. Um, uh, like Kathleen said, we have, we greatly enjoy, have enjoyed living here in the village. Uh, we've lived on Rio Grande for almost 45 years. Uh, so we not in village. Yeah, so we so we understand the area well. We're we're interested in uh, in the preservation of the land, and we're interested in uh, building something that the village can be proud of, and that's in keeping with all of the regulations that we have here. So, any questions? Yes, I'll, I'll now open the floor from commissioners to ask you any questions. Does any of you have questions for the applicants? I, I do have a question. For yes, you. Commissioner CB. Yeah, is, um, <laughs> does your lot have uh, any access to water um, from any nearby Asakia or? Right? Do you have, are you working with that at all? Yes, um, we, we do have access to the Asekia, which is west, runs uh, north-south and is located to the west of the property. Uh, several years ago, we uh, accessed that, um, that <laughs> the ditch um, and put in an a underground pipe. So every, every lot along the south side would have access to the water from the ditch with, with appropriate um, controls, gates, yeah. gates and controls, uh, not an open ditch, but an underground pipe. And we did that several years ago for, for, the, <laughs> for the properties along the south side of that, of the, area. Okay, thank you. Mm-hmm. Any other questions for the applicants? Chairwoman Eby, I have a question. Yes, Commissioner Gay. Um, Mr. Zavala, what, do you have a neighbor in that track 37A that's west of this track mm-hmm. C? Mm-hmm. You, I suppose you, you, you publicly noticed this um, project, and you, there was no no uh, feedback from neighbors. But do you have a, a driveway easement with that with the people living immediately west of you, or west I, of the track? Uh, uh, uh. Commissioner Gay, uh, commissioners, yes. I, when we p- purchased the property, I don't have it in front of me, but but the whole, all of the residents living along this little lane uh, agreed to a particular easement, and that easement the, to the th- that the road it continues to the west for access to the neighbor you're referring to, uh, there would be no circumstance under which that would be blocked or right. impeded to my knowledge. Does that answer your question? Um, 
Yeah, it, it's. I guess it goes without saying that you couldn't block that access. That would that would be blocking access to all of your other properties. But I'm just. I don't think it's even relevant to this this uh, hearing. But it's been more curious that that they are aware that you are proposing to build another home in that track, and they are aware that it's you know imminent. So. But I guess that's part of my question is they, you have a good relationship with these people and they're aware of this and yes. there's no, yeah. and then there's yeah. no um, driveway easement issues that you're aware of. Not that, not that we're aware of and this has been publicly, publicly posted. Um, we're a neighborhood here. Um, the, the, the neighbors to the West are elderly and <laughs> We, we, it's important that we have good relationships with them. So yes, um, to our knowledge, um, or nothing contrary to our knowledge, uh, there are no objections to, to our plans for this property. All right, thank you. Any other questions for the applicant? Okay. Um, is there anyone present who would like to speak in favor of the application? In favor of the application. Stand by. See the standby is that does it? I see um Plotner, are you here to speak in favor of the app application? Well, yes, I am. Okay, please state your name and address for the record. Thank you. Uh, so, unlike the the name, uh, that's my daughter's name, Betty Lou. <laughs> I had to borrow her computer due to technical okay. difficulties I was having. So, uh, I'm Will Plotner okay. uh, with Cartesian Surveys, acting as agent for the uh, owner. Go ahead. Do, you, do I need to be sworn in? Oh, I'm in sorry. Uh, Attorney Winter will swear you in. Okay. Okay, Mr. Plotner, I had raised your right hand. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes, I do. Thank you. Sure. Um, one thing that I would like to add, um, I think the Villas did a good job of um, explaining the situation, but one thing I, I would like to add is that, uh, you know, this lot had a residence on it at one time. So it's not like we're taking a, a piece of property um, that was just has been in the green belt for the last 35 years. This is this had a residence on it at one time. And uh, they, they kind of mentioned it when they uh, said that people who lived there had sold it. But uh, because those uh, residents were so dilapidated that uh, they were really safety issues, and rather than keeping them uh, on the property, they de demolished them, and so they've been, uh, you know, sitting there waiting with the intent to have their kids move there someday. So, uh, you know, most of the residents on this lane uh, remember the the fact that those houses did exist, and. You know, it, it's really kind of taking it back to the way it was as far as having the same number of residents along there. But uh, I am also the surveyor um, involved with it. I, that is my plat. And so if you have any questions on that, I can certainly answer any questions you have. Does anyone have a question for Mr. Plotner?
seeing none. Thank you, Mr. Plotner. Are there any other speakers who wish to speak? Thank you. In getting some feedback. There are, no, there are nobody else on the call. Okay, thank you. Um, is there anyone present who would like to speak in opposition to the application? In opposition. There is no one present on the meeting. Okay. <clears throat> then, um, are there any further comments or questions from the commissioners? Okay, I, I'm going to close. Uh, yes, Commissioner uh, Benavides. I, I heard uh, Director Justice say that the easement was increased by five feet and that uh, from, tw so now it's 25 feet. And uh, I, I'm assuming the Avi laws are, are, are very much aware of that and don't have a problem with that. Is that correct? We, well, we, 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 we were told that we couldn't file for a, a variance for both at the same time that first we had to have the land flat, flatted uh, we intend after the after this approval, if it gets approved, to file for a a uh, variance uh, for the lot Setbacks. that that decreases that twenty five feet. Uh, but we we couldn't do that until we we get this process finalized. Uh, so, Commissioner. Uh, Benavides, commissioners, uh, if I could just clarify. Um, so, uh, yes, uh, the, the five foot uh, addition to the access easement um, is going to be necessary if, along with the existing 20 foot access easement. Um, that's a continuation uh, kind of from a similar plat that's to the east. Um, and the setbacks uh, will need to be a separate variance, but I think I think there was a little bit of miscommunication in, in the question and answer. So that will be decided separately. Is that what you're? you're yes. You're uh, yes, Commissioner Benavides, Commissioners, uh, the subdivision plat requirements mm -hmm. will be administrative. Um, assuming approval of the variance, uh, the next step would be an administrative approval uh, of the minor subdivision uh, and then we would cross check the plat with our ordinances. Okay. Any other comments or questions before I close the floor to comments? Okay, I'm gonna close the, the floor for comments. And since we passed the new resolution, I'm going to see if there's any discussion among the commissioners prior to the motion. And please speak up. I, I have two screens going here, so I can't see you all. I hear no uh, discussion, so um, I will call for a motion and this would be to um, either approve or deny the 20-12 variance application. I make so, a motion to approve the 20-12. Is there a second? I'll second that. Okay, the motion has been made by Commissioner Gay and seconded by Commissioner Benavides to approve the variance application. Is there any discussion among the commissioners now? Well, um, <laughs> I, I always like to make a comment about the findings, um, <clears throat> which personally I agree with the findings that uh, have been made by Director Justice. Um, I think that uh, 
this application meets the hardship criteria. Um, number four, five, and six. I think the um, circumstance with the MRGCD tract is uh, something that has affected this parcel and um, the development proposed uh, doesn't exceed, what's the wording? Differs from that allowed in the ordinance only enough to relieve the alleged hardship. And the hardship is such that relief is justifiable in accordance with the goals and policies of the master plan. And so I'm intending to um, vote in favor of the motion. Are there any other comments or, or discussion at this time? Okay, I will call for a roll call vote on the motion. Um, Commissioner, let's see, Christensen? Yes. Commissioner Benavides? Yes. Commissioner Park? Yes. Commissioner Seavey? Yes. Commissioner Gay? Yes. Commissioner Berenstam? Yay. And Commissioner E.B. votes yes. The motion carries unanimously. All right. Let the record show that the public hearing on item 4A, the request by John and Kathleen Avila for a variance is formally closed. And thank all of those who uh, spoke at the meeting and attended this meeting. Thank you for your attendance. And uh, we are now going to move on to the next item on the agenda. And that is number five, old business. We have no old business, so we'll move on to new business. We have no new business. So the next item is reports. And may we have, uh, Director Justice, may we have your planning department report, please. Uh, so commissioners, um, so uh, we continue to operate remotely due to COVID. Um, Jennifer Schilling uh, continues to process building permits and parcel permits. Mm -hmm. uh, business renewal notices were sent out earlier uh, this month and they have until uh, December 31st to renew without a late fee. Um, We've also reformatted our business licenses to be distributed digitally this year uh, due to COVID-19. Uh, Keen Heinzelman is working with property owners to bring their properties into compliance. Um, and within 15 days post-election, candidates are required to remove their signs and Keen is working uh, to remove signs and contact candidates. Uh, I am working on the hazard mitigation plan update with Jeff Phillips, our emergency management coordinator, uh, reviewing the public input survey results and updated uh, the goals and action steps uh, for the plan update. Uh, I also received feedback from the Board of Trustees uh, at their meeting last month on short-term rentals and cannabis. Uh, the general consensus uh, from the Board on short-term rentals is that the Board agrees with the recommendations in uh, the presentation that I gave uh, and wants to ensure that there are measures to minimize impact on neighbors. And the general consensus on cannabis um, is that the village should prohibit com commercial cultivation um, I'm working now to draft ordinances on both of these topics. Um, and I'm also working to solicit public uh, feedback. Um, if uh, the commissioners or uh, any members of the public are interested in uh, reviewing the presentation that was put before the board that is on our website, and we are having an abbreviated version of that presentation in, in the upcoming uh, Village Vision magazine. Uh, and then in the January issue, we'll have an article on cannabis as well. Uh, so these articles are intended to solicit uh, public feedback prior to uh, any ordinances. Um, and so if there's anybody with comments, uh, they're more than welcome to uh, email me. Uh, we do need the comments in writing so that we can forward them to the board. Um, and the variance subcommittee uh, met at the end of October uh, per our uh, meeting last month, uh, just on the discussion of the variance language we did uh, have a we did form a variance subcommittee um, and we are scheduled to meet again in November. 
uh, we're discussing potential changes to the variance language, initially starting with research into the variances and uh, that the village has granted in the past, and then also what variance language other New Mexico communities have in their code. Um, for these meetings, uh, all commissioners will be invited uh, to them. Uh, if uh, you are interested in attending, please uh, RSVP so that uh, we would know whether or not we uh, have a quorum. And I stand for any questions. Any questions for Director Justice on her report? Uh, so if we want to RSVP, how do we do that, Director Justice? Oh, uh, uh, Commissioner Benavides, commissioners, uh, I send out an email about a week in advance of that meeting um, with the meeting uh, information. Uh, and then if you reply back to me, uh, I'll be able to uh, send you the meeting link. Uh, at this point, I can uh, send you an email uh, earlier in advance if you'd like to know uh, the meeting date and time and are you available and interested to attend? Sure. Yes. Okay. You might be back by then, Gil. Yeah. Any other questions for Director Justice? Okay, thank you, Tiffany. Uh, we'll move on to uh, commissioner's informal discussion. And I just want to um, thank Tiffany for uh, her, the preparation that she did for our little subcommittee that met a couple weeks ago. It was just Dan Gay and me. And so our next meeting is a, actually a week from today, I believe, um, Tuesday, November 17th at 11.30. And um, so that invitation should go out uh, tomorrow, I guess. Um, Tiffany prepared a list of uh, all the variances that have been discussed in the last few years. And uh, my task that I took on is I'm going to go through the ones that were contested or that had a, a non unanimous vote and see if I can glean something from that. And uh, Tiffany, I think, is going to. Uh, be looking at other um, ordinances from other municipalities in New Mexico. So I encourage any of you that are interested to come to our next meeting. And any other uh, commissioners that have any informal discussion they'd like to engage in. Okay, is there a motion to adjourn? I'll make a motion to adjourn. Second. I second. Okay, uh, all in favor, say aye. 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 All opposed, say nay. All right, the motion carries unanimously, and I think we have almost a record. Well, no, it's not quite the record, but the uh, meeting is adjourned at 7.59 p.m. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. I have a giving, y'all. Yeah, thank you.